Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve minimum number of days to eat n oranges. So this is a pretty short problem description and the solution is actually going to be just as short, but the problem is that arriving at the solution is pretty tricky, at least arriving at an optimal solution. So we are given n number of oranges and we can eat these oranges and we want to know what's the minimum number of days we can take to eat all of these n oranges and we have three choices of how we can eat oranges on any given day one choice we have for the day is just to eat a single orange during that entire day another choice we have is if and only if n is divisible by 2 then we are allowed to eat half of the oranges in which case the remaining number of oranges will, will also be half the number of oranges the third choice we have is if and only if n is divisible by 3 then we are allowed to eat two-thirds of the oranges in other words we'd have one-third of the oranges left if we ate two-thirds so if it's divisible by 3 then we will be left with one-third of the oranges if we make this possible decision so those are the three decisions we can make and like I said, all we want to know is what's the minimum number of days it'll take us to eat all of the oranges. So obviously the most brute force solution is going to be something like 3 to the power of n because we have three choices, right? And we have n oranges. So worst case, the height of the tree is going to be n, right? But with a little bit of caching and memoization, we can actually get this solution to be big O of n. N because you see, you know, the, the possible number of sub problems is only going to be N, right? We have N, we could do N minus one, N minus two, all the way up until zero. So you can cache it and do a linear time solution with depth first search. But it turns out that we can actually do even better than linear time, a breadth first search approach without repeating the same sub problem is actually going to get us a time complexity of log base two of N. And I'm going to explain why later on. And so there's a BFS solution that can do this. There's also a separate greedy DFS solution that can also get us to here. And I'm going to show you all of those solutions and explain a bit of the intuition on how you can actually arrive there. So let's say we started with 10 oranges. Then we know we have choices, right? We could either eat one orange and we'd get to nine oranges. We could divide it by two. Now, is it divisible by two? In this case, yes, it is. So we could divide it by two and then we'd have five oranges. Is it divisible by three? No, it's not. So the third path is not going to work for now. Right. And of course, we could continue this. Right. So is this uh, one, one choice with this we have is just eat one orange, in which, case, in which case we'd have eight oranges. Can we divide this by two? No. So that path is not going to work. Can we divide this by three? Yes, that's going to work. And so now it's probably becoming clearer, right? This path is probably going to take longer. And this path, we can divide this by three again, which will get us to one. And then we can just eat a single orange, which will get us to zero. And then we can see, okay, it took us a path of four, right? So it took us four days. So that's going to be the result. But there's no guarantee. We're doing DFS, right? There's no guarantee we're going to find this solution before we end up going down this path. And this path, obviously, is going to give us a height of n equals 10, right? So that's going to kind of limit our complexity and of course we'll notice we're repeating similar sub problems right how many sub problems are we going to have well obviously one through ten right those are the only values we'd end up having so we can cache it so with with memoization we could get a solution of n but you know we can actually do better than that and it's a little tricky on why we can so if we start out with n equals 10, then we know that it's never going to take us more than 10 days to eat all these oranges, right? Because we could just take one orange and eat it every single day. So we know that the solution is going to be bounded by 10, right? Result is going to be less than or equal to 10 because if we really wanted, we could just eat one orange every single day. But it turns out that this boundary is actually smaller. It turns out that this boundary is proportional to log base 2 n and that's what we're going to use to get a more efficient solution what i'm saying is for any input value n the solution is proportional to this i think there's a constant in front of it maybe two times log base two of n but the constant obviously isn't too important right so why is that the case how is it possible that we can guarantee that we could eat all n of these oranges in log base two time 
let me show you. So, so we start out with 10 oranges. We know that either this is going to be divisible by 10 or it's not going to be divisible by 10. In other words, either this is going to be an even number or it's going to be an odd number, right? In this case, it's even, so we can divide it by 2, right? In this case, it's odd, so we can't divide it by 2, right? We say n minus 1. And then we get to four. Now this is, yes, once again, divisible by two. So we can set it to two, divide that by two. And of course, this is divisible by two again. So, you know, divided by two and we get to one and then it's not divisible by two. So then we can say n minus one. But you get the idea at this point, right? Could be that either the number is like a power of two, right? In which case we can divide by two like we can continuously divide by two, right? Or it could be that it's not, right? Worst case, we would be able to divide by two, then subtract by one, then divide by two again, then subtract by one, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because half of number, half of all numbers are even, half of all numbers are odd. And just curious, how many times can we take a number and divide it by two before we get to the base case of one orange left? How many times can we take a number and divide it by two? Well, remember, logarithms can give us that answer. Log base two of n is how many times we could take a number and divide it by two, right? But we know that not every number we get is going to be divisible by two, in which case we might need to do a, you know, a minus one in between, right? Either the number is even, in which case we can just keep dividing by two, but we might get to like some odd numbers. In worst case, half of the numbers are going to be odd. So we would have to do a minus one half of half of the number of times, right? So that's kind of where I get this constant from, 2 times log base 2. And I don't know if this is exactly correct. Maybe it's higher than that or maybe it's less. But we can guarantee that the solution, the result, is going to be proportionally bounded by this value, right? Because we can take any number n and divide it by 2 that many times and then we'll get to the base case of 1. But so how does this actually help us? Like, why am I even telling you this? What I'm trying to say is if we have a decision tree, a DFS decision tree, we will, we will reach a leaf node, you know, some leaf node. Let's say this is our leaf node, right? We will reach a leaf node and a leaf node basically means we found the result, right? The first leaf node we reach means we found a result. The leaf node is obviously going to be zero. And what I'm saying is a leaf node is going to occur at a height of less than or equal to roughly log base two of n, right? Before we said the height of the tree is gonna be n, but I'm saying it's actually log base two n. So how can we guarantee that we're once we reach a leaf node, we're gonna stop going in, we're gonna stop going through our tree. We're not gonna do any extra work. Once we reach the first leaf node, we can stop and we can guarantee that by doing a breadth first search solution, right? So instead of doing DFS, we're going to do breadth first search, right? So we're going to look at every choice. Let's say we started with 10. We'll obviously get to a nine like we did. We'll get to a four and we can't divide this by three. So we're going to keep doing this, right? Until we get to a solution, until we get to a leaf node, right? Okay, so in this case, we guarantee that the height of the tree is roughly log base 2 n. So what's the time complexity of a BFS going to be like this? Well, still we have three choices. So the time complexity is going to be 3 to the power of log base 2 n. So that's not any better, is it? But with this solution, if we also make sure that we don't revisit the same value twice, we can improve this. I don't know exactly what the time complexity would be. I know it's definitely going to be significantly less than n, but I don't know the precise equation for that. But along this same line of thinking of using this idea that the, height, the max height of the tree could be possibly log base two of n, we can find a little bit more of a greedy solution. And that's what I'm going to tell you. You can code up this solution. And I believe that it does pass the test cases of BFS. You don't visit the same node twice and you stop as soon as you reach the first leaf node. So that's a BFS that'll work. There's a slightly more greedy DFS solution that I'm going to show you where we actually can limit the number of choices to two to the power of log n. So generally speaking, we want to be greedy. We want to be able to divide this by two or even divide it by three if it's possible. But we know it's not always going to be possible. So what can we do? We know the base case is if we reach one orange, of course, that means it's going to take us one day to do that. That's a base case. If we reach zero, that's also a base case. But until then, we have not gotten to the base case. So what can we do? 
Well, in this case, is this divisible by two? Yes, it is. So what we can say is, okay, divided by two and get to five. That took us one day. Is it divisible by three? No. But how far away is this from being divisible by three? If we take 10, mod it by three, what do we get? If we got zero, that means it is divisible by three. But in this case, we get one. That means there's a remainder of one. That means if we eat just one orange, then it will be divisible by three. And when you divide it by three, you know, 10 divided by three, we get three, right? So three remainder one. That's basically what our mod gave us, right? 10 divided by three gives us three remainder one. So if we ate one orange from 10 and then and divided it by three, yeah, that would take two days for us to do, right? Because we had a remainder of one. But after we did that, we would be left with three oranges. So that's kind of the operation we can do. We can say, okay, if this is not divisible by three, let's make it divisible by three. So we're saying here, so on the left side, all we did was n divided by two. Here we're saying n minus one, then n divided by three. So that took two different days. But we're going to do it with a single operation, right? We're going to make a single DFS call. After we do these two operations, we're going to be left with three. Notice how we don't have a third path where we're saying 10 minus 1, leaving us at 9, because that is pretty much implied by this one, right? We're, we're still counting the number of days it would take if we subtracted a 1 from here. And so this is kind of along the same line of thinking before, you know, if we keep dividing it by two, how high is the height of the tree going to be log base two of n? If we keep dividing by three, how high is the height going to be log base three of n? So why am I saying that the real time complexity is log base two of n? Because log base two of n is technically greater than log base three of n. And of course, the big O time complexity is always going to be the larger uh, thing that we're considering, right? Big O is the worst case time complexity. And again, so we're basically going to be dividing by two or dividing by three. So this is five. So let's say we divided this by two. Well, it's not divisible by two. So we're going to have to subtract one from it. Why are we subtracting one? Because if you take five, mod it by two, the remainder is one. So we have to do that before we can take, you know, five divided by two, which is going to be two, two remainder one. So it's going to take us two days to reduce this down to two oranges. So we'll first have to do an n minus one, then n divided by two. Is this divisible by three? No. But if we take two oranges from it, basically, you know, over here we said n minus one, then n divided by three. But if we take five, five modded by three, that gives us a remainder of two, right? So in this case, it's going to take us two days to eat two oranges to make this divisible by three. And, you know, if you take five divided by three, we get one because we don't have, we chop off the remainder, but we got the remainder from the mod. So it's one remainder two, right? So we eat two oranges. It takes us two days to eat the two oranges. Then we divide by three and we're left with a one. So here you can see n minus two, n divided by three, then we're left with a single orange. This did take two days though. Right, and at this point, we can continue down both of these paths, but it's clear that we've reached the base case. N equals one means that it'll take one more day to eat this orange. So we can say, okay, one plus two plus another one, that gives four. So four days to eat all 10 oranges, and then we can return. So roughly the time complexity is going to be log base two of N because that's going to be the height of the tree, but we are going to be caching. So we won't end up you know, having, we won't end up repeating the same sub problem multiple times. And yeah, so this is pretty much the main idea. Once you can figure this out or can get to the breadth first search solution and realize that, you know, it's going to be proportional to log n, writing up the code is definitely not too difficult. So let's dive into that. Like I said, we're going to do this recursively and we're going to be caching. So let's create a cache of DP. Of course, we have two base cases. If we have zero oranges, then we can return zero days. If we have one orange, then we can return one day to eat that single orange. And until then, we are going to be doing recursion. We're going to be doing our DFS on N. So we'll say if N is in DP, then we'll return DP of N. Until then, we're going to be doing the recursive case. And like I said, there's two recursive cases because... We want to either divide it by two or divide it by three. If we can't divide them by two or three, then we're going to have to do some 
extra math for that. So we want to call DFS on n integer division divided by 2, right? But it's possible that n is not divisible by 2, in which case we'd want to add a constant to this. This DFS is going to return the number of days, but if n is not divisible by 2, meaning there's a remainder of 1, then we're going to add an extra day to eat that extra orange. How do we know if there's a remainder? Of course, n modded by 2, right? n modded by 2 plus this. So if n is divisible by 2, this is just going to evaluate to 0, right? So basically what I'm calculating here is if we divide it by 2, how many days is it going to take us? And we'll store that in a variable. Let's just call it 1. And we're also going to have a 1 plus because when we're dividing this by 2, that also takes a day for us. So here we're computing if we did divide it by 2, how many more days would it take us? But we have to add in a 1 because we just did divide it by 2. That takes a day. So that's where this plus 1 comes from. So let's compute if we divided it by 3, which is going to be similar. So 1 plus n modded by 3. So either this is going to evaluate to 0, meaning uh, n is divisible by 3, or it's going to evaluate to 1, meaning we have one extra orange that we have to eat. It'll take us one day to eat each orange. Or we have two oranges, right? 2 n modded by 3 is remainder 2, meaning it'll take us two more days to eat those oranges. And this plus 1 comes from the fact that we are going to be taking n and dividing it by 3 before we pass it into the recursive DFS. And once we have those, of course, we want to take the minimum of them. So minimum of 1 and 2 and then set it equal to dp of uh, n, right? We found the result for dp of n. We can go ahead and cache that. And then, of course, we can return it. And so once this is done, we can just go ahead and take our DFS and actually call it passing in N and then we can return the result from there. So you can see the solution works and it's pretty efficient. I admit it's not super intuitive to get here. It's a pretty small code change compared to the brute force, but it does yield a much more efficient solution, roughly log N. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.